Hi, I'm Eric Covington. I've uh, been in this area for 40 plus years. I moved here from Montreal uh, many years ago, and uh, now I'm uh, retired, and this is my retirement passion. Priest's Mill is the old grist mill that was originally designed and built by Father Alexander McDonnell. He was the priest, I guess, in the area. He was commissioned by the Bishop of Upper Canada, Barry, who was the owner of the building. We made an arrangement and uh, so he built all the nice facilities in here, cleaned out the area, I put in some heating. We, we worked together to build it up to make it habitable. And so now we're, we have this cozy little corner. When I approached Barry, I wasn't too sure what I was doing. I just needed a place to put my studio. Um, after a year or so, it became apparent that a lot of people wanted to see what I was doing. And I didn't really want to run a business. So we decided to make a little not-for-profit business. Uh, the idea was to make a place that supported all the local artists. So we have 15 artists in, in our fold right now. We sell their art, you see it all around us. And we also hold uh, arts events, uh, everything from glass blowing classes, which I think you've seen, uh, up to, uh, we have a performance arts space upstairs. Uh, we're gonna be holding paint nights. We, because we're not for profit, Airbnb approached us and they are sponsoring us charging nothing to the customers or us for handling the bookings and taking care of all our business. As a result, we're able to run a number of art courses. Currently, we have, we're producing two of them, stained glass, where you make a little lantern, and glass blowing, which you've seen, where we are teaching, it's a one hour class. Um, we're about to offer uh, a glass fusion class, which is really making glass jewelry. So this is where people can work without any heat at all, but just set up pieces of glass in the right order, and then we melt them down for them, and it makes a nice little earring or a pendant sort of thing. We get our glass like this. It comes in little pellets. It's a special glass. It's not so much special as it's consistent. It has the same formula box to box to box to box. Most glass, all glasses that we use in glass blowing come from sand. It's not a very, it's not just sand, it's usually clear quartz crystal sand. Then comes the color. This is, this is the color. It, it this is also the color. We get bars of yellow, we get ground up stuff. It's just ground up glass. If you start with a silver based color and you mix it with a, uh, a lead based color and then heat them together, they inter the chemistry interacts. And then if you use a flame that has too much carbon in it, it will make it suddenly a gold sheen appear. So you can play with the chemistry as you go along. When we make glass, we gather the glass out of the melter. So I keep this glass in the melter at 2200 degrees, every, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That melter is on. When I'm not blowing for a few days, I turn it down a little bit, but I cannot let it get cold because it takes a week and a half to bring it up to warmth again. So you reach in with your pipe and you get a gob of glass on the end of the pipe and then you sit down at the bench and you move it around with the tweezers and the pliers and the jack. So you move it around with hand tools and it very quickly becomes too cold to move. So you go back to the glory hole and you heat it up in the glory hole until it starts moving again. Then you can move it some more. And eventually you form what looks like a light bulb on the end of the pipe. 
when you're done with that, then you take another rod called a punty from the French bar of steel, pontil, um, ancient French, and you get a little bit of glass on the end of the punty and you touch it to the bottom of the pipe, bang the pipe, sorry, the bottom of the piece, bang the pipe, and the pipe, the piece breaks off and now you have an open vessel on the end of your pipe, like a light bulb with the base broken off. You heat that again in the glory hole and you reach in with the jacks and open it out and magically it's a vase, a glass, a bowl, just how far you open out. I wandered around in the glass blowing environment for a long time and eventually I ended up being introduced by uh, Paolo Bastinello, introduced me to making murine. And I will reach and get one. This little butterfly is what I'm first made with Paolo. And I learned that I can very accurately place the glass colors where I want them on the vessel. So then making these murine tile roll-ups became my passion. And that's the whole reason I do all of this is to be able to roll up a tile with the colors in just the place I want. I see the mill is sort of separate from me because the gallery part is self-sustaining. We have artists, we charge a commission to sell their pieces. This keeps people like Natalie employed. Uh, we have funding from Young Canada Works. We had four summer students this summer. Natalie is part of the internship program. Uh, so eventually, we are set up to become a charity. My, my goal, which I've expressed, is to make this place able to live after I'm re fully retired.